Star Citizen is full of amazing ships. The game's ultimate goal is whatever activity you want to undertake, there will be a spaceship to fit the role. From combat to exploration, from mining to trade. The most recent ship video from CIG then is a walkthrough on the current progress for the Banu Merchantman, one of the game's largest ships. It's impressive to say the least, it will have a multitude of functions. And as always with this game's ships, it is extremely well designed. This ship's design, however, belies a number of important and concerning questions. One of these especially stands out. Whilst big is generally impressive, just how big is too big? Now, size has always been important when it comes to sci-fi. The Imperial Star Destroyers in Star Wars are a display of power and strength. Meanwhile, Star Trek's Enterprise is a physical manifestation of human ingenuity and the drive to discover. The Battlestar Galactica perhaps best represents humanity's sheer determination, and EVE Online's Titans are a sign of great accomplishment. But what about Star Citizen's Banu Merchant Man? Well, the Banu Merchant Man is a sign of great wealth. What if that means the real world size of the player's bank account? Well, I'll let you decide. No, actually no, that doesn't need to be left as an open statement. Real world finances certainly do play a huge part here. But even still, when it comes to in-game, in fictional logic, it's fair to say that Star Citizen's largest ships are in the same league as all the iconic ships from sci-fi greats. The Banu Merchantman does pretty much everything. It's a base of operations built at huge scale. It has markets, medical facilities, trade operations, fast, perhaps unrivaled cargo capacity, as well as room for vehicles, ships, and a large crew. Oh, and of course it's also well armed. As with all of Star Citizen's large ships, the Banu Merchantman can be flown by a lone player. However, in the hands of a single individual, it's more or less useless. The ship is designed and built for huge groups. Now, in some ways, it can be viewed as a guild house, a faction base of operations. Of course, that's not the best way to describe it, far from it in fact, but it's also not a terrible way of describing it. The recent developer walkthrough then of the current progress on the ship gives plenty of insight on what to expect. It also highlights the immense amount of work that CIG put into each and every one of their ships. It's at a level of detail and complexity that is completely unrivaled when it comes to other games out there. So okay, the Banu Merchantman currently costs 720 real world US dollars. It's a huge sum of money for any in-game purchase, regardless of what it actually allows you to do. Now, of course, you will often be told that many of these ships, all of these ships in fact, are purchasable in-game through gameplay. Well, that may well be true, but the amount of time they will have to put in to achieve this will be significant. Maybe players will instead group together to purchase these ships, who knows? And then again, maybe CIG will see the light and purple stop selling ships once the game is fully released. At least, that's what they once claimed. Either way, at any rate, the Merchant Man is far from Star Citizen's largest purchasable ship. The UEE Javelin is three times the length of the Merchant Man, and with an original real-world price point of $2,500, it's also more than three times the cost. Meanwhile, keeping the focus purely on ship size, the 890 Jump is 210 meters long, the Carrack is 126 meters long, the Reclaimer is 155 meters long. How does that compare to the Merchant Man? Well, the Merchant Man is 160 meters long. At any rate, when it comes to spaceships, yes, generally speaking, bigger is better. However, that brings us on to the real meat of the question. What do these huge ships currently do in Star Citizen? And if we can't satisfactorily answer that, what will they one day be able to do in the game? So we'll know that Star Citizen is currently in development. Right now, you can jump in on the other build, which as I've said before, gets plenty of regular updates. You can also try out some of the larger ships yourself, 
either if you can find someone in-game that has one. Alternatively, you can try out the ships if you wait for a free fly event. And there's also a third potential method here, you can always rent the ship using in-game currency, which you have to earn in-game. But to that question of what can you do with these ships, well, the CIG say they have future gameplay plans, which include deep space exploration, salvaging, trading between star systems, and much more. For now though, just how players would currently use the Banu Merchant Man in Star Citizen remains a bit of a mystery to me. But of course, many people will want to use it as a base of operations. They want to use it for group activities with their organization. But as to how it fits in the hierarchy of current gameplay, well that one is difficult to answer. Fortunately then, it's not a question that needs to be answered just yet. Firstly, because there's no current release date for the ship. Secondly, because there's no release date for all the gameplay that the ship would require. Ultimately then, as with many things Star Citizen related, it's all about the game's future. What would one day be possible? It's a laudable goal, although not everyone agrees with the way it's being achieved, or even if it can be achieved. For now though, a lot of Star Citizen players are quite content to watch the development unfold and see where it all goes. And really, there's nothing wrong with that, just so long as visible progress is being made. I admit though, I have a lot of questions that perhaps go beyond the scope of what I've already discussed. For example, CIG discussed the Banu Merchant Man's meeting room, where so-called high-level trade discussions will occur. So I assume this will be for roleplay purposes. Or if not, will these negotiations be NPC connected or player connected? If player, what in-game economy or systems will underpin and support those negotiations? In short, what will even be traded at this so-called high level? The ship's built-in marketplaces are also interesting and noteworthy to me. Elite Dangerous has done something similar with their fleet carriers. Here, players can buy and sell commodities. It's an interesting addition to the game. However, it is problematic in many ways due to the severe limitations on how Elite simulates its economy. Bottom line, the game doesn't really have an economy in any real sense of the word. EVE Online then is a much better example of a game with a real economy. Here, players regularly organize trade at huge scales. This works because every item in the game has a real place within the economic chain. So I kind of feel that a ship like the Panu Merchant Man for it to have a true place within the game, then Star Citizen will also need a true scale economy to support it. Theoretically, this is where Star Citizen's Quanta system will come into play. CIG claim it will be capable of supporting and simulating physical NPCs along with their movements, cargo and tasks. The Quanta system will also control and dictate the game's mission generation, and these should be related to and interconnected with other aspects of the game. In short, it's CIG's way of simulating a living and breathing galaxy, one with the persistent NPCs that have physical tasks to carry out. It's the foundation then of what could perhaps be considered a true economy. Now at this point, it's still debatable just how extensive all of this will actually be. And we won't be able to accurately judge it until CIG have fully implemented it. Either way, Quanta is just one aspect, and an important one of that, of all the background elements that would ideally be required to support a ship of the scout of the Merchant Man. The same can also be said for expedition ships like the Carrick and the Odyssey. The larger the ship then, the more laser focused its design, the more detailed and extensive its associated gameplay will need to be. And that kind of brings me to an answer of the question of how big is too big when it comes to spaceships. The answer is pretty straightforward. A ship is too big once it has grown beyond the scope of the game that is capable of supporting it. Whether or not Star Citizen has fallen into that trap or eluded it, only time will truly tell. What we do know right now, however, is that the game's spaceships truly are fantastic, and the tour of the Banu Merchant Man is no exception. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.